Tree, let's do this. Um, so um, taking notes a little bit differently today. Um, this way you can kind of go your own pace. You can stop the video, pause it, um, go back and watch different parts to make sure you get this. So now that you have some experience with basically identifying shapes, um, particularly by their definition, um, let's get this information down. Let's lock it into our brains and have a reference for later. Um, and so I already have the definitions as you guys already practice them um, in this note, uh, in this note sheets. Um, but let's see if we can kind of suss out what we mean by descriptive properties and how the picture can change um, whether you're looking at it by definition or by properties or in this case both at the end. Um, and so we, let's just start with the most basic um, four-sided polygon shape, the quadrilateral. Um, we break down the word quadrilateral. Quad means four, lateral means sides, and so this is literally any polygon um, with exactly four sides. Um, which means it's not nothing actually special in terms of how it's supposed to look. It just has four sides. It is a polygon, so the sides have to be straight. Um, but there's nothing that you're trying to pattern or make special about this shape. And so this is an example of many examples of what it could be to be a, um, just a general quadrilateral. Now, to make this uh, a little more specific, we probably want to go ahead and name the um, vertices, the corners, as it were. Um, and that means we can actually call this one specifically A, B, C, D. So just like any other geometric thing, this has notation that pertains uh, particularly to the shape. And the naming convention here is just to list out the vertices in a row. In this case, A, B, C, D are the vertices. And so the name of it is actually just A, B, C, D. Okay. Now, <clears throat> when you move on to descriptive properties, what we're talking about with properties are things that you don't necessarily need for the definition, because um, the def definition is like the minimal thing that you have to have in order to have the object. Like any polygon with four sides, you can call it quadrilateral. Um, descriptive properties are things that you also know to be true. Well, with the quadrilateral being so general, there are no descriptive properties. There's nothing else that has to be true for every quadrilateral other than it ha just has four sides. Those sides are straight, the shapes are closed, i.e. it's a polygon. And so the picture here isn't actually going to be any different. In fact, uh, because it's not going to be different, I'm just going to cheat. And I'm just going to copy and paste. Um, the same exact picture um, because there's nothing else we need to mark in terms of congruencies or parallels um, so have you. Now if that was confusing hopefully in the next one will make a little more sense um, as we move on to what we call a kite. Um, so here we have a kite as a quadrilateral with two sets of adjacent congruent sides. Um, what I mean by that is that a kite has two sides that are touching in a row that you can consider to be congruent then it has a whole other set um, that again touching in a row and are, are you can consider to be congruent. Um, and so if we, if we name this uh, uh, LKTZ, um, what I mean by two sets of adjacent congruent sides um, are these sides have to be congruent. They're touching here at L and they're congruent. Then we have another set of congruencies that are touching here at T. Now again, we're just going to call this like LKTZ all in a row. Um, this is a kite LKTZ. Now, in terms of things that have to be additionally true about a kite, um, these, again, are descriptive properties, so things that, don't, um, that you don't have to name as part of a definition, um, but are also true of a kite. Um, there's really one major one that we have to keep track of, and that has to do with diagonals. Now, keep in mind, diagonals are just the lines that go through the shape. And so if we, if we look at now the diagonals, which aren't necessary for the definition, but in terms of properties, um, what we can see here is that the diagonals are going to be perpendicular to one another. In other words, they're going to um, cross a 90 degree angle. And so in the end, that's what we're going to have in terms of like the picture. Okay. Um, the descriptive properties here, the only really additional one is that diagonals are perpendicular. Okay. And so even though the diagonals being perpendicular aren't necessary to define a kite, uh, it turns out to be true because you have a kite. And that's a, that's a difference between saying that we have, excuse me, uh, the definition versus the descriptive properties that are also true about the shape. Um, moving on to trapezoid, um, we see a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with at least one set of parallel sides. And so in terms of what the picture can look like, um, what that means is that not all sides are parallel, but you have at least one set that it happens to be. Um, in this particular case, uh, the parallels will be top and bottom, as we're marking here with these, uh, these Bs, these chevrons. Um, let's see, A, B, C, D. And so we have A, B, C, D 
as a trapezoid with one set of parallel sides. Um, that's how it shows up. Um, now, things that are additionally true, let me go ahead and copy this down here. Um, the additional property that turns out to be true has to be with the angles. Um, now, in terms of how we're going to write this, uh, what we can say is that adjacent angles are supplementary. Okay, um, so what's meant by that? Adjacent means touching. Of course, we're looking at the angles. And so what that means, if we look at the angles, ooh, okay, if we look at the angles here, and look at the angles here, um, they're not the same angle, they're supplementary. Um, supplementary means they add to 180 degrees. Okay, and so in this case, if we take angle A and we add angle B, that'll be 180 total degrees. Um, that's also true on this side of the shape. Um, if we take C, and we add it to D, um, C plus D in terms of degrees must also equal 180 total. Um, so that's what's meant by supplementary. Supplementary means that they add to 180 degrees. Right? Again, that's not something you have to observe in terms of definition, um, but it's something that's also true of the shape because you have a trapezoid. Okay, let's talk about parallelogram. Now, hopefully you're noticing as we're kind of getting a more specific shape, there's more properties that happen because you have the shape. And so again, in terms of like the simple basic definition, um, if you have a parallelogram, what that means is you have a four-sided shape, a quadrilateral, with two sets of parallel sides. And so again, in terms of what that looks like, we have a shape that uh, kind of looks like a tilted rectangle. And we have two sets of parallel sides. And so we have one set here, so top and bottom are parallel to each other and the second sets are left and right-hand side. Um, now in terms of names, um, um, again, it doesn't really matter what we call it. This one just now ends up um, getting called DPSG, um, parallelogram. And so again, we see kind of this, like this is what the definition is, this is what the picture shows up to be. Now, because you have a parallelogram, and we're starting to play now with more specific things like um, parallel sides, um, we're going to have a lot more going on in terms of properties. In fact, this one's going to have quite a few additional properties that are true now that you for sure have a parallelogram. Okay, so let's make a little list off to the side. Um, so here's some things that are also true about parallelograms just because you um, now know you have one. Um, so the first thing that you have to notice is that you have opposite sides on congruent. Okay, so in addition to being parallel, they're also congruent. Second thing, opposite sides are parallel. Uh, third thing, opposite angles are going to be. Um, opposite angles are also going to be congruent. And the fourth thing that's important is that adjacent angles um, are going to be uh, supplementary. Okay, um, and so if you notice, kind of like, especially with the with the trapezoid, um, we had these parallel sides, and it turned out that you had one set, or I'm sorry, you had adjacent angles that are congruent. Um, now that we're going to a parallelogram, we're adding another set of sides, and again, we see the adjacent angles are supplementary thing pop up, um, and so that kind of hints that maybe you have a relationship amongst the shapes. Um, like if you have a parallelogram, you can also call it a trapezoid. Because if you say a trapezoids have at least one set of parallel sides, well, parallelograms have them too. They just happen to have another set. Um, but that's a, that's a focus for the near future, not right now. Um, so in terms of marking this, so if we want to mark that opposite sides are also congruent, well, that means we have to add some congruency symbols. So um, what that means is top and bottom, in, ter in addition to being uh, congruent, or parallel, excuse me, are also congruent and left and right, in uh, addition to being parallel, are also congruent. Um, this also says now that opposite, uh, opposite angles are also congruent. Um, so if we look here, um, what we have are those are congruent because they're opposite, not touching. Okay. And those are congruent, opposite, not touching. Um, last thing, we also have adjacent angles are supplementary.
Um, and so again, what that means is that they act 180 degrees. And so like in practicality, like if I said this is like 80 degrees, I'm just making up a number for demonstration, um, that means that has to be 100 degrees. Um, so if that's 100 degrees, that means that has to be 80 because they have to add to 180. And if P is 80, that means F has to be 100. And again, I'm not saying that they are in this particular example. I'm just trying to demonstrate what it means to be supplementary. Um, so like in general, what we can really generate are a couple equations. Um, we can say like G, whatever angle that is, like G degrees plus B degrees is equal to 180 degrees. In other words, two in a row. Uh, but we can also say that if we take B degrees plus P degrees, so two at the top here, um, those are also equal to 180 degrees. In fact, we just go all the way around. Um, P plus S is that equal to 180 degrees. So those are low measure degrees. And then, of course, G plus S is also equal to 180 degrees. And so again, kind of like uh, as an extension of trapezoids, um, here we have some very simple angle relationships that have to add to 180. Here we have a lot more complicated ones. Um, in fact, um, a trapezoid is going to be one of the more complicated shapes. Um, let's make an addendum here. I just realized I wrote opposite sides are parallel. That's actually part of the definition. Um, what I meant to write here are diagonals um, bisect one another. And remember, bisect means to cut in half. Um, and so what I meant to put here, and I apologize for that uh, change I had to make, um, the, another property that turns out to be true is if I take these diagonals on a, on a trapezoid, um, they actually cut each other in half. Okay. Um, and so those are all the properties that turn out to be true about a parallelogram. Sorry for that change I had to make. I just, uh, frankly, it's a little bit late, and I just I wasn't thinking uh, about that particular one because that's already the definition. And so you see a parallelogram actually has a lot of stuff that turns out to be true about it. Um, now that we're going to rhombus, again, a quadrilateral, so a four-sided polygon that's equilateral, meaning all the sides are congruent. And so you can kind of think of this as a tilted square. Um, so a square kind of got pushed over. Um, the sides remain the same, um, but the angles in between change. Um, and so equilateral means all the sides are the same. And so that's what the picture would look like um, if we're just dealing with a general rhombus. Again, in terms of a name, we just call this ABC. All right, um, in terms of the additional properties, well, um, this seems to be a lot like a parallelogram, um, but short to maybe like square size. And so we're going to see a lot of the properties for parallelogram um, repeated here for rhombus. Um, so right off the bat, we can say in addition to the opposite sides being congruent, um, the opposite sides are parallel. Okay, in addition um, to the opposite sides being parallel, we can also observe the opposite angle. Um, we're going to be congruent. And so again, just like parallelogram, um, we have adjacent angles. Um, they're going to be supplementary. Just like parallelograms, diagonals will bisect one another. Um, and now we have an additional one because rhombus it seems to be a, actually just a slightly higher order shape. Um, diagonals are going to be perpendicular. Okay. And so again, if you're kind of thinking about the progression here, um, all we basically did is take the properties of a kite where you have two sets of adjacent congruent sides, diagonals are perpendicular, combine them with that of a trapezoid and a parallelogram, and we end up specifically with a rhombus. Because um, you can definitely argue that a rhombus does have two sets of adjacent congruent sides. It just has a whole lot more, and those sides happen to be all be the same length. Um, now, in terms of marking up our diagram, let's go ahead and do that. Um, we have opposite sides that are parallel. So in addition to being, and being congruent, they are also parallel. And so you can definitely see how a parallelogram fits into this definition quite well. Um, opposite angles are congruent. And so if we have the angle at D and the angle at B, um, they're congruent. The ones at A and the ones at C are as well. Um, adjacent angles are supplementary, so this is the one where if you take two angles in a row, they add 180. It's like A plus B equals 180. Um, addition like A plus D equaling 180. Um, B plus C equaling 180. And then like D plus C equals 180. Um, and so again, hopefully you recognize that um, that's very similar to what you saw 
in trapezoid, a little more complicated parallelogram, and now repeated here in um, in a rhombus. Uh, so now we have uh, let's see, a diagonal bisect one another. And so just like in the parallelogram, if I cut, if I look at these diagonals, uh, they're going to be cut exact. They're going to cut each other in half. Excuse me. Um, but just like a kite, they're going to actually meet at a right angle as well. And so you can see that's a lot going on as we're kind of making a progression. Um, we start out with very, very simple shapes where nothing really additionally has to be true. Um, and as we're kind of gaining sophistication in the shape, um, we're seeing that the final diagram where you have all the properties marked, um, they're becoming much, much more complicated. Um, so now uh, let's go to the rectangle. Again, think of this as like an addition to that shape. Um, so we start out with the most basic of definitions. It's a quadrilateral that is all equal angular. And that's all you really need to, to do to, or use to prove that a rectangle is actually a rectangle. You just have to show all the angles are the same. Now, my diet here is terrible. Um, but if you have a four-sided object and all the angles are the same, what that means is you have four 90-degree angles. That's what it means to be equal angular. And so if you want to prove A, B, C, D is a rectangle, all you have to show is all the angles are congruent. And so again, we have like A, B, C, D. It doesn't really matter what letters you pick. I'm just picking the ones that first come to mind. Um, but as we're kind of increasing our shape, we can also notice a lot more things have to be true about this rectangle, this really terribly drawn rectangle. Uh, let's get that out. Copy it. Paste. Okay. Um, and so you're going to see, again, a lot of repeated things that you've seen already before, um, because you can tell this is kind of maybe a form of a parallelogram. And so automatically, all the parallelogram stuff is true. Um, so, so even though the, the, you don't have to prove this to be a rectangle, um, we can right away assume that um, opposite sides are going to be parallel. We can assume opposite, uh, opposite angles are going to be congruent. Um, opposite sides, going back to that, will also have to be congruent. Um, diagonals, um, we're going to have to bisect one another, just like with parallelograms, um, just like with rhombuses, the diagonals are going to be perpendicular to one another, okay, but it, because this is a higher order shape, we can now add a new one, in particular about diagonals. Um, the diagonals are going to be congruent as well. And so as we kind of mark up now our property-driven diagram, uh, we can start adding a lot of stuff in. Um, so we have opposite sides that are going to be congruent, in addition to those opposite sides being parallel to one another. Um, the opposite angles is already actually marked because they're all 90 degrees. They have to be. Um, but as we're talking about the bisector, not only will the bisectors here cut each other in half, and so, like, this is the same length here. Okay. Um, oh, wait a minute. Let me back up here. I jumped the gun. The angles actually aren't perpendicular here. Let's just back that up. Okay, sorry about that. Um, they're going to bisect each other, but additionally, now they're going to actually be congruent to one another. And so, the green lines are actually going to be the same length. And so, we can probably mark that a little differently. Um, so we can say like DB is going to be congruent to KC. Okay. Um, they're not going to be a 90 degree angle to jump the gun. That's actually true about squares, which we'll finish up with. Um, but as you can see, like this looks a lot like the previous diagram. Um, the difference being the diagonals actually aren't going to be um, perpendicular. Um, our final build is a square. And I know like we're all familiar with the square, um, but I'm saving this for last in particular because I kind of wanted you guys to get in a sense um, like we have to be able to talk about these shapes more than just on a super basic level. Um, we have to kind of identify them not only by definition, um, but by property. And so if we have this, uh, this square, um, I'm just going to call it DWXY. So we have a DWXY squared. Um, of course, we have to follow the definition for being equilateral and equilangular. Um, equilateral meaning all the sides are the same. Equilangular meaning all the angles are the same. In this case, it's going to be um, all congruent. Um, as we move into uh, now the stuff that's also true about the square, now that we know we have a square, what else can we definitely tell is going to be are going to be true about it? Um, again, we're going to see a sharing, and so this is kind of like the culmination of all shapes. 
And so really all the properties we basically mentioned in all these other shapes now have to be true um, in a square. And so again, starting from the top, we already know the opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent because they're marked to be so. Um, but we can also now assume Um, we can assume now the opposite sides have to be parallel, in addition to be congruent. Um, the diagonals, just like on a rectangle, are going to be congruent. The diagonals are going to be perpendicular, just like in a rhombus. Um, the diagonals are going to be uh, are going to bisect one another. Okay, just like they did on a parallelogram, just like they did on a rhombus. In addition to like the opposite angles being congruent, opposite sides are going to be congruent, which I guess we can kind of fill out here, um, even though it is kind of marked as a definition. Um, it doesn't hurt to put that down. Okay, um, and also and this is kind of inherent in being ninety degrees, um, but definitely like um, adjacent angles. are going to be self-dimensionary as well, um, which I guess is also true of a rectangle. So if you want to put that one in, I guess you can. Um, so marking up the diagram here with all the additional information, um, we have the sides are congruent. We can also now mark the sides to be parallel. Uh, the diagonals here are not only going to be congruent, so in the sense that like Vx is congruent to Yw, uh, but they're also going to meet at 90 degree angle and they're going to bisect one another um, And since they're congruent, they're all going to be congruent to one another too. Okay, and so um, I, So this is just a chance to kind of consolidate that information um, So I'm going to ask you to put this information right away to work um, attacking on a three-level activity that uh, As soon as you're done with these notes and they have wrapped up um, you should get my attention And so we can get you started on that three-level thing. The three levels are going to ask you to consider three different things um, like one, can you really identify just by using the properties and just using the definition um, what shape it should be? The second level is going to ask you to think about like why, how these shapes are interrelated. Um, because again, I hope you notice that a lot of these properties are going to match. And the third thing is going to ask you to take those properties, take those definitions, um, and then solve some novel algebra problems. Okay. Um, so wrap these notes up, get my attention, and we'll get you started on the rest of the day. Thank you very much.